or plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Alright folks, welcome to Word of the Lord. James over here with you and glad you are, are with us. Uh, I want to say I uh, appreciate you watching. I do want to say off, uh, at the very outset, uh, I know uh, Mark and Michael made a statement about uh, watching Bill Lockwood in some debates that he did back in 96 and uh, I do want you to know just FYI, uh, Bill Lockwood is not faithful. Uh, he was a he was a great servant of the Lord. He had he had a tremendous ability, but uh, he's no longer faithful today, and so that is a shame and a, a great regret. But we do want you to know that we don't uh, endorse his behavior or his uh, 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 his living uh, situation today. But uh, anyway, just want to make that disclaimer out to you. But we do want to say thank you for watching the work of the Lord, and if you want to visit with us, 250 the Boulevard is where we meet in Eden. 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me or word from the Lord at gmail.com. I want to remind you uh, of our times, as always, Sundays, 8.30 p.m. Uh, uh, so what does the Bible say? And we'll be saying a little bit more about that as uh, this night goes on, getting ready for this coming Sunday. And then, of course, you just saw Mark and Micah uh, on what does the Bible say? Religious Review coming up tonight after the news. So this, this program will go off at 10 Stay tuned for the news. Probably see Mark Childry or uh, I'm guessing Mark Childry on the news, and you can stay tuned for that and, and uh, come back for Religious Review immediately following uh, the news. And, of course, if you'd like to meet with the, the churches that bring you what does the Bible say in Religious Review, H23 Starling Avenue in Martinsville, uh, you can call Brother Eugene Edwards, 276-806-6922. It's how you can reach him. I'd uh, be glad to have a Bible study with you or give you some uh, information, some DVDs, tracks, whatever you, we can uh, uh, do for you. would be glad to be a serv uh, of service to you. For uh, 120 American Legion, uh, it's where Mark and Micah are. Uh, here's their phone numbers, 434-549-1714 or 429-5221. And uh, they too will be glad to be uh, of service to you and help you in any way that you, that you uh, uh, have need. Tonight, our... Uh, really want to talk about two things that are upcoming uh, this weekend. One is Saturday and one is Sunday. One is supposed to be Saturday. One will definitely be Sunday. One, one is uh, prophesied to be Saturday. One is definitely going to be Sunday, Lord willing. So uh, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, things like this. Now I know you've seen these, these billboards. We've been uh, talking about it from time to time on, on this program and others. This is a, a production of FamilyRadio.com. Uh, it's a, a radio, um, I guess, uh, uh, syndicate. They've got about 140 radio stations, I believe, in the United States. 
Uh, Harold Camping is the man who is behind all this. He's like a 90-year-old so-called prophet. And he's predicting that Judgment Day is going to be May 21st. Now, a lot of, there's some uh, 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 misconfusion about, uh, or, or confusion about what's going on. He's actually saying the rapture is going to come, and then uh, uh, Judgment Day is coming in October, I believe. But anyway, what you have is you have individuals who are saying something's going to happen and the Bible's going to guarantee it. But, you know, I don't know if people have really stopped to see if this is really going to come true. Now, the reason why we're talking about this is because, obviously, two days from now, this is supposed to happen. Now, uh, when I first saw that, I said Judgment Day, I saw it said Judgment Day, and it said Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10. I didn't know I thought Judgment Day was going to go all week long or something, but, but then I realized he's talking about his radio program. But Judgment Day is, is being prophesied. Now, here's Harold Camping, the man who is predicting this, and uh, this is a headline from actually the United Kingdom. And it said, U.S. preacher warns of the end of the world is nigh, May 21st, around 6 p.m. to be precise. And that's exactly what, what Harold Camping says. Harold Camping says that around 6 p.m. is when it's going to be raptured. Now, not only did Jesus say of that day and hour knoweth no man, Harold Camping says, I know the day and the hour. Now, some people just want to guess at it. You know, they say, well, it's going to be somewhere in May. Not Harold Camping. He is so determined that he's going to get it right, he's actually put a an hour on it, around 6 p.m. Now, I think that's around, I think he may be out in California, so I think that's around 9 p.m. our time. So Saturday night, you know, uh, I, I don't know uh, what you'll be doing around uh, 9 o'clock on Saturday night, but I would, you know, I'd start taking notice. You might want to go out and look at the skies, and I'm sure you that it's still going to be there because anytime someone like this wants to predict something, God is not going to make it happen. God says, no man knoweth the hour. This man does not know when the Lord's coming. I can assure you, the Lord might come tomorrow, and he might come Sunday, but he's not coming the 21st. You say, he's not coming on this day. Now, second time is a charm. Friends, what is it about false prophets and false teachers that people just don't get? This man not only has predicted that the world is going to come to an end once before in 1984, but... Uh, or excuse me, 1990s, but also he's predicted the world will come to an end uh, five or six times before. So what you need to realize is a false prophet's always a false prophet. Why are people buying into this? Now what I want to do tonight is I want to talk about Harold Camping. And as you know, that we have a debate coming up with Mr. Eli James from the KKK, <coughs> representing the KKK. I'm assuming he's still a member of the KKK. Uh, but... Harold Camping and the, the uh, KKK camp actually have something in common. And as I told uh, Bruce Hedrick to, uh, this afternoon on the bus, uh, what they have in common is not the fact that they're both wrong. There's something else that they have in common, and that's what we're going to get into. But I want to first start and look at what Harold Camping is saying, just to remind you, and remind you what is supposed to happen according to to Harold Camping, and then I'm going to get to how he comes to this conclusion. And that is the common denominator. It's how Harold Camping and how Eli James both come to a conclusion that they are right. <clears throat> and I think that's fine, I, th I find that pretty interesting. But this is what's supposed to happen on Saturday around 6 p.m. This is from a website that, that promoted uh, Camping's uh, uh, doctrine says, we can know from the Bible alone that the date of the rapture of believers will take place on May 21st, 2011, and that God will destroy this world on October 21st, 2011. So they know for a fact that May 21st is going to be the rapture, <clears throat> and then on, on October 21st of this year, there's going to be the end of the world. Now, friends, that's a pretty bold statement. But here is what is going to happen if they're right. Here's what's going to happen. Now, they're talking about the rapture. Let's talk a little bit about the rapture for a moment. You know, when, when people talk about the rapture, and I heard a man call in on the, uh, the program this afternoon talking to Bruce, and he said, well, you know, rapture's not in the Bible, but there is going to be a carrying away. And he's actually got that right. You know, sometimes when people say, when they hear the word rapture, 
They say, well, where is it in the Bible? Well, the, the definition of rapture is certainly there, the being called up or carried away. But what these people are saying is nothing like what Jesus says is going to happen. Now notice this. In Matthew 24, we'll start in verse 36. Now, I want to, use, I want to show you this first because I know many people are familiar with it because they use it or they hear it used in regard to the rapture. Okay? But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Now, Jesus says, of that day and hour knoweth no man, except Harold Camping. Harold Camping must be the Father. I don't know. I get, that would have to be the conclusion, wouldn't it be? If no man knoweth the day and hour but the Father, and Harold Camping knows the day and the hour, I don't think that's the case. I'm not going to be blasphemous enough to say that, but that would be the, the conclusion. But as many of, but as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, that were before the flood, were eating, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not uh, until the flood came and took them away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Now stop and think about that, friends. Jesus is telling us that. When the Lord returns, it's going to be like the days of Noah. No one knew what was coming until it hit them. It was going to be just that way. It was going to be all of a sudden no one knew it. How in the world does Harold Camping get by saying this is what's going to happen? How is that the case? Now, when it comes to the rapture being carried away, here is where most people miss it. And this is what Jesus says. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken the other, and the other left. Two men shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, the other left. All right? So you got two individuals. One's going to be taken, the other left. Now, what you have to do, friends, is we have to get a divine commentary. We have to get a divine commentary on what the Bible's saying. The best way to let the Bible, uh, understand the Bible, is let the Bible explain itself. How is it that two men, two people are going to be uh, in the field, one one taken and one left. Two women are going to be at the mill, one one taken and one left. What's being what's being said here? Well, let's stop for a minute here, and let's go over to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, uh, chapter four, verse thirteen. Now, notice what Paul is going to say. Well. He says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will, uh, Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, the word of the Lord that we, sorry, sorry about this, that we, uh, the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, or shall not go before them which are asleep. For the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Here is the divine commentary on Matthew 24. Paul is saying, when the Lord returns, them which are alive shall be caught up. All right? The dead in Christ will rise first, and then they which are alive shall be caught up into the clouds with the Lord. Now, Paul didn't say anything about the unrighteous. He's simply talking about the righteous, the dead in Christ. He's talking about the faithful who are still alive. And so he is simply talking about one part of society that is faithful, obedient to the Lord, those are the ones that are going to be uh, raised from the grave and those are going to be ascended to heaven. He simply makes no mention of the unrighteous. And so when Jesus says in Matthew 24, one shall be taken and one left, he's not saying what happened to the one left, neither is Paul. They're both simply dealing with the fact that the righteous are going to be caught up. Paul is giving a divine commentary on what Jesus said. 
See how that works? He's simply saying, look, the righteous are going to be caught up into the clouds. Now, Paul and Je or excuse me, Jesus doesn't deal with who's in the ground, who's in the grave in Matthew 24. At this point, he's simply talking about the ones who are caught in the air. Paul deals with those who die in the Lord and are raised up, and then those who are alive shall be caught up. But both of these accounts are talking about the same event and they do not address what is going to happen in a twinkling of an eye to everybody. They're just looking at one slice, one particular aspect of this great event when the Lord returns. Now friends, it's not going to be a rapture like Harold Camping is describing. It's not going to be a rapture like all these denominational preachers describe. The man who called to, today and talked to Bruce said, well, you know, the rapture is going to come, but then we're going to have this three years of tribulation. Well, that's not true either. Friends, when this happens, when this happens, that's going to be the end. When this happens, it's going to be the very end. There's not going to be a judgment day in October. There's not going to be a judgment day in January. There's not going to be a judgment day three years from now. When the Lord returns with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ rise first and then those which are alive and remain will be caught up together in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. There ain't nobody coming back down here. There's nothing else going to happen on this earth but be burned up. Now, that, that is what the rapture really is. That's what the Bible, when the Bible talks about being carried away, that is, that is the, the idea of being caught up. Now, the denominational term rapture and their dominant, denominational doctrine is foreign to the Bible. Something about being caught up and there's people being left. Friends, people are actually selling their houses and they're actually providing uh, ways for people to take care of their pets because they are assured that they're going to go up and be caught up in this, in this uh, 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 false notion of a rapture and think they're going to leave people behind. Friends, that's just not the case. That's just not the case. Listen to this. Listen to this. When, when the Lord returns, when the Lord does return, the rapture, in the so-called rapture, it's going to be a day when the dead in Christ rise, as we've already noticed, but so are everybody else in the grave. There is one resurrection for all, and it's going to take place on the day when the Lord returns and the, and, uh, 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 the righteous go to meet him in the air. There's nothing going to happen after that. Now watch this. In John 5, 28, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which the, uh, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now don't tell me there's something waiting months and years and eons after this. No, this is it. This is it. Now when people say, well, you know, people are going to be caught up. Well, listen. The day that people are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, people are going to come out of the graves too. People are going to come out of the graves too. Paul said it. Paul said that those that are alive in Christ will rise to meet him in the air, but they're not going to go before the ones who die in the Lord. Well, Jesus said those who die in the Lord are going to be resurrected at the same time as those who died outside of the Lord. The resurrection of the, uh, uh, excuse me, the resurrection of the good and the resurrection of the evil. There's going to be one resurrection. Everybody that's in the grave is going to come out when they hear his voice. Now, we just read Paul saying, we just read Paul saying that the voice of the, of the uh, uh, archangel, right? The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Well, when the Lord descends with a shout, guess what's going to happen? What's going to happen is you're going to have people coming out of the graves. Good and bad, righteous and unrighteous. They're going to be coming out, and the righteous are going to go meet him in the air. Now, friends, that's what the Bible is saying. That's what the Bible is saying. Now, when, when this takes place, when this takes place, there's going to be nothing left. 
you won't have to worry about your you know, little rover live, uh, staying behind because you're going to be gone. And everybody that you paid money to to keep them, he gonna, they're going to be gone too. This world is going to be burned up. You don't need to make plans. Listen, if Saturday, if Saturday is the day of the so-called rapture, then it's the end of the world. If Saturday is the day of the rapture, you want to make plans for the rest of the week. But friends, I know it's not. You know why? Because Jesus said no man knows the date. No man knows the date. If that's the day that the Lord returns in the clouds to call those who have died in the Lord and the righteous with him, that's going to be all she wrote. It's going to be Katie bar the door. Nothing left. That's it. See? So, I don't know why people are making a big deal about it because it's not going to happen on Saturday. Now, like I said, it may come Friday and it may come Sunday. It's not going to come Saturday. And so, what you need to realize is the, the, the dangers of believing a false prophet like Harold Camping. Now, friends, let's think about this. If Harold Camping was right, and all these other people who believe the rapture is right, let's think about what's going to happen. Let's think about consequences here. Let's think about the consequences of what would actually happen if what they were saying were true. Who is going to be caught up in the air to be with the Lord? Let's think about this. Who's going to be caught up in the air to be with the Lord? It's going to be all the righteous, right? It's going to be the, uh, the righteous and the innocent. It's going to be the children. If anybody's going to make it to heaven, it's going to be the children. Now stop and think with me. If the rapture takes place, as Harold Camping said, the rapture according to Harold Camping or the rapture according to, to the denominational world, if it takes place and leaves people behind, you are going to see more Amber Alerts go out than you've ever seen before. Because people are going to be looking for their children. Because I can assure you this, friend, children are going to be definitely safe and secure when the Lord returns. If the Lord returns, then you're, going to, you're not going to see any children on the, on the world, on the earth. Now, does that, does that make sense to you? We're going to have John Walsh on TV going, well, we got, you know, 50 million Amber Alerts running out because people are looking for their children because they're all being caught up. Not going to happen, friends. See how foolish that is? See how foolish that is? If he, if he was right, You'd, you'd have, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bruce and uh, Charles, they'd be going out and traveling all over the county talking to people who their child just disappeared. Be more dis missing persons than you got milk cartons to put their faces on. It's not going to happen, friend. It's not going to happen. God has devised a plan whereas he's going to call all the righteous, the saved individuals at one time in a twinkle of an eye, the dead are going to raise out of the grave and ascend into the heavens, and so are the righteous who are on the earth, and in the twinkling of an eye we're going to be changed, and the dead who are in the graves, the unrighteous, are going to be resurrected, and they're going to be passed judgment on. The judgment's going to take place at the same time when the dead are called out of the graves, and the righteous ascend to meet him in the air. There's not going to be anybody left behind. There's not going to be anybody left behind. I don't care what Billy Graham says. I don't care what all these false truths say. There's not going to be left behind. But I'll tell you what's going to happen if Harold Camping's wrong. There's going to be some good benefits when he's wrong. Here's how I know children are going to be safe, friends. Let me just say this for a moment. In Matthew 18, Jesus said, uh, Jesus said, the disciples said, who's the greatest in the kingdom? And Jesus said, called a little child unto him and sat him in the midst and said, Brady, I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shine into the kingdom of heaven. Now, friends, let's think about this. I know there's some folks out there who believe that you're born in sin. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I could play you a Baptist preacher who actually says that his little child is a devil, you know? Who actually, who's actually said that his little child is a, 
is, is born in sin. Now, friends, but there's not a single person out there who's going to say that their child deserves to, to die and go to hell because they're sinners. But that's where sinners go, is it not? Isn't that where sinners go? Don't sinners go to hell? And so what we need to, what we need to stop and think about is what happens if Harold Camping was right there wouldn't be any, any children left because the children are going to be caught up in the heaven. Here he is. Tim Whitehart. I preach, I just don't get it. I, I tell you, I'm not a sinner. I tell you, you are. And if you just said that, you just lied. So you sin. There you go. My baby is three months old. I love her to death. She is so beautiful. She already knows who she's got to wrap around her finger to make it in life. Me, Daddy. And so I'll look down into her little crib, or I'll hold her in my arms and look down at her. She's already giving me the little eyes and a little smile. By the way, I line up. She does it to nobody else but me. Those eyes are just, uh, she don't you ask her mama. She's giving me those eyes, and man, she's smiling, and she's cooing. And it's like she already knows. I know I'll wrap her on my finger. And you know what I've said about that little three-month-old baby? My Alexandria, my we call her Allie for short, but you know what I've said about her? I looked in her eyes and I said, you've got to be the most perfect angel that ever has been created. And you know, when I say that, I mean that. But you know, there's, there's a lot of untruth in what I just said. I mean, I love her. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not going to sit there and call her bad names or anything because she's my precious angel. But she's not perfect by any means. The Bible says, even though she appears that way, that we are all are born to see it. Are you listening in sin, David said in Psalm 51, did my mother conceive me? He said, I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is ever before me. In verse 4, look what he said. He said, against me, and the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. In verse 5, he said, I was born, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin. Did my mother conceive me? Let me tell you, it's not how much sin you do, whether you're better than the next person, because you're always going to find somebody you're better than. It's that our problem is we come short of Jesus Christ. So what did Jesus have to do? Jesus had to become man to take care of All right, so here's Tim Whitehart saying his child is, you know, not really a little angel. She's she born in sin. Well, she, she definitely inherited some sin from him, but if she, if she had any, she inherited it from him. But the fact is, friends, she's not. Children are innocent. Now, you want to tell me, you want to tell me that when the Lord comes back, according to your doctrines of the rapture, that he's going to leave behind all these sinful little children because they're not going to heaven? No, friends. When the Lord returns, the righteous are going to be caught up, and that includes little children. No sin in heaven. And the innocent children are going to be the ones who definitely go. You see? Now, let me just say this about the consequences. And this is what I would say is definitely something to consider. When Harold Camping is wrong, here's what you need to look for. You need to look for some cheap billboard advertising. Let me tell you, he got so many billboards out advertising the judgment day that you might be able to go down for your business and pick up a billboard and say, look, you know, uh, I don't know if the contract, six months or whatever you got on here, did you prorate it? Did, you, uh, did, did he pay for a whole year in advance? Because that's going to, that's, you know, that day's gone. When that day's gone, you get to go get that, that billboard. And, you know, if he had to find, sign a six-month uh, six lease on that thing, hey, why not just prorate it? Or why not just get it free? You might call the billboard company. I'd say you need to get some cheap billboard advertising. Because Harold Camping, he missed a boat. He missed a boat. May 21st is not going to be a day when uh, uh, the Lord returns. No rapture, no judgment day on May 21st. <laughs> You're on, all right? Go ahead and put the phone lines up. We'll, we'll start taking some calls. So see, friends, this is what we're talking about. Now, I'm going to get to how he gets to this in a moment, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how uh, 
how it's connected with uh, the folks we're going to deal with on the next day. The next day, May the 22nd, is going to be the day you need to watch for. You don't need to worry about May 21st. You need to worry about May 22nd. May 22nd is when we're going to have a debate with Mr. Eli James from the Christian Identity Movement, and he's going to be representing the, the, the Ku Klux Klan, and he is going to be explaining, he's supposed to be explaining how the white man is the chosen people of God. That's, that's what he's supposed to be doing. Now, the reason why this is important, friends, number one, is because it takes place the day after. Harold Camping says, you know, the people that are going to be gone, our judgment day is going to take place. I'm not worried about May 21st. I'm, I'm dealing with May 22nd. I'm looking forward to this day, the, the day when we can have a d biblical discussion about who it is that God actually accepts as, as his people. Now, that's the day you need to worry about. That's the day you need to set your DVD for, DVR for. You know, your, your, your VCR or, your, or, your, or whatever you're recording. That's what you need to set your time about. Now, here's what we're going to be discussing. We're going to be discussing this. That he teaches that the white man is God's chosen people. I want to play the video clip for you. Let you hear it from his own, own voice. The facts concerning... A forgotten truth about the Bible and the history of the true Israelites of the Bible, namely the Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, and Caucasian people who are the true Israelites of the Bible, and we're going to be proving to you that the Jewish people are not, in fact, related to the Israelites of the Bible at all. So what we're going to be demonstrating in this video series is, number one, demonstrating the fact that the Caucasian people are, in fact, the Israelites of the Old Testament all right, you hear that? The Caucasian people are the Israelites of the Old Testament. Now, friends, there's a lot of consequences to that. We're going to get into it. But the white people, the Caucasian people, are the Israelites of the Old Testament. So that means that the people through whom the Israelites came are white people too. Now, that's what he's going to try to prove. He's going to have to prove that. He's going to have to prove that. So we're going to be asking some questions about that. We're going to have some discussions on that. Now, don't you think that's, that's something valuable, something worth being discussed? That's why I know, friends, the Lord's not going to come back on May 21st because I believe he wants to see the debate too. I think he wants the truth to have an opportunity to answer this false doctrine. And my prayer to God is that we'll have that opportunity. You know, that we will be able to show the community that we will have a door of utterance where we can show the community that, you know, God doesn't look at the color. God looks at the inner man. God looks at what's on the heart. Now, that's what we're discussing. Now, when, uh, when we uh, uh, meet Mr. Mr. James, Eli James, we're going to be having a, a debate, a format like we normally do here. We're going to be dividing up the time Sunday night, 10-minute uh, speeches. He's going to get 10 minutes. I'm going to get 10 minutes. He's going to get 10 minutes, and I'm going to get 10 minutes. We're going to do that for the first hour. And then we're going to open the phone lines. You may have some questions for him about why he says the white people are the only, uh, only special people. Or you might have some questions for me as to why I say they're not. But nonetheless, friends, we're going to have a great opportunity on the, the day after held camping says the world's going to end to discuss the Bible. Now, friends, let me just give you some of the ridiculous consequences of this doctrine. Let me give you some of the ridiculous consequences. Think about this. Did you know that they actually are going to tell you, he's going to tell you that Queen Elizabeth is kin to King David? You say... His whole argument is resting on the fact that God promised nations and kings and that they're going to be able to produce the genealogy of the queen, the royal family, all the way back to King David. You want to hear him say it? People, and we're going to be demonstrating that we are, in fact, his relatives 
and the Jewish people are not. In fact, he disowns the Jewish people in many places in the New Testament. Now, we know also that Queen Elizabeth II today is, in fact, a literal descendant of King David. And uh, there's a parable of the 153 fishes in the New Testament. And it turns out that from Adam to Queen Elizabeth II, there are 153 generations in this genealogical record. So the, all these numbers in the Bible have meanings, and we are going to investigate these meanings. All right, so did you hear that? He's, he's going to, I don't know where he gets the 155 fishes in the New Testament. The parable of the 155 fishes? I know it's a parable about the nets, but I don't remember a parable about 155 fishes. Maybe he's getting that from one of his extra books that he uses. He's going to bring up the Apocrypha. He's going to bring up books like the book of Maccabees, which is in the Apocrypha. He's going to bring up extra biblical books to try to prove his point. He's even gone too far, as you may have heard on this program, to say that they're writing their own version of the Bible just so they can get their doctrine. Now, friends, that's what you need to be listening for. It's just like the Jehovah's Witness, just like the Mormons. We brought our own books, change our own doctrines, just so we can get our doctrine in there. Now, that's what we're going to be discussing the day after. That's what we're going to be discussing the day after. Now, you might be saying, well, James, how do you get Harold Camping and the KKK and the Christian Identity Group, how do you get them having something in common? Well, it's not maybe what you think, but it is, it is something in common. They both twist the scriptures to try and prove their point. Now watch this. Here's what Harold Camping says. This is, this is uh, from his website. I'm about to read it. I don't have a video for him. But he says, in 2 Peter 3, 8, which is quoted above, Holy God reminds us that one day is as a thousand years. Therefore, with the correct understanding that the seven days referred to in Genesis 7, 4 can be understood as 7,000 years. Now, friends, that's what the evolutionists want. Now, they want a little bit more than that, but they sure like the idea that every day is 7,000 years. Now, can we just stop and answer that just for a moment? Seven days are 7,000 years? That means you've got 1,000 years. Uh, you've got 1,000 years between God creating one thing and the time that he created another thing. Notice this. 1,000 years from the time that God created, uh, let's see, that God created the, uh, uh, the plants and the animals. Here it is. Verse uh, uh, 9, God said, Let's divide the waters from under heaven and be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering of waters he called, uh, uh, he called the seas and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding seed after his kind, whose seed is, is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth, uh, and the earth brought forth grass, and the earth yielding seed of his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and morning were the third day. Now, a thousand years later, a thousand years later, God puts the sun, moon, and stars in the sky. Now, friends, let's be real. Let's be real. A thousand years? But see, this is what we have. We have a man who is trying to get his doctrine by figuring out the numbers. He's trying to twist the scriptures, particularly numbers, so that it meets what he, what he says, so it meets with what he believes, fits his doctrine. He goes on to say, We learned that when God told Noah there were seven days to escape worldwide destruction, he also was telling the world there would be exactly 7,000 years, one day is 1,000 years, to escape the wrath of God. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, friends. Why is it in the days of creation there were 7,000 years for each day? <clears throat> but when Noah gets ready to go into the ark, and by the way, he went into the ark seven days before the floods came, you mean to tell me he was in the ark 7,000 years 
before the floods came? You see how he's twisting the scriptures? But he's saying, well, that's God's way of saying there's going to be 7,000 years to escape the wrath of God that God's going to bring when he destroys the world on judgment day. So now he's trying to get his 7,000 years in here so that he can make it fit 2011. You see that? 7,000 years after 7990 B.C., that's the year of the flood, is the year 2011 A.D. So he does the math for you. 4990 plus 2011 minus 1 is 7,000. Now, one year must be subtracted in going from an Old Testament, B.C. calendar, date to a New Testament calendar because the calendar does not have a year zero. All right? So he comes up with 2011 as the day when the year is going to be destroyed. You see how he twisted that? Now, friends, does that strike you as strange that someone would go to so much effort and so much, uh, you know, uh, uh, time to figure out numbers that will fit a doctrine in order to come up with something that God said you didn't know to start with? And he wants us to believe that, well, he's figured it out because he's searched and he's searched and he's come to realize that if you multiply enough numbers and you divide enough numbers, you subtract enough numbers, that you'll come up with a figure that, lo and behold, is 2011. You know, friends, I'm, I guess I'm never, I never cease to be amazed at all the people who go to all the effort to learn everything about the Bible, but yet they know nothing about it. Think about that. Think about that. They can tell you what the middle book in the Bible is. They can tell you what the middle verse in the Bible is. Tell you how many books are in the Bible. Tell you what the shortest book in the Bible is, what the shortest verse is. They may can tell you, they may can tell you, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of Bible trivia. But they can't tell you what the Bible says about the day of the Lord when he's going to return. They can't tell you clearly that the Lord is going to come as a thief at night. See, friends, you have to have help to mess up this book. And this is the kind of help that, that is given to people. Resting the scriptures. Now, you want me to show you how the Q Cut Clan does the same thing? Here's how they do the same thing. Mr. James, Eli James, wants you to believe that the United States is the regathering of Israel. That the Anglo Saxons, the white man, the Caucasian man, is God's chosen people, and because of certain prophecies that he's pulled out and he thinks fits his doctrine, he's going to tell you that the white people own this land and that this is the regathering, this is the prophecies that God has fulfilled, or the fulfillment of God's prophecies. And guess how he does that? Guess how he comes to that conclusion? just like Harold Camping got to his conclusion. Listen to him. So this is a clear prophecy that for a period of seven times the Israelites will be driven away from Palestine to be regathered, not in Palestine, but into another nation, another nation. So what does this term seven times mean? Well, we find that in the book of Revelation, in the book of Dan, we have this term called three and a half times that uh, we are uh, given on repeated occasions. And uh, Bible scholars have discovered that when we come across these terms three and a half times and seven times, that uh, it is a period of 360 years. So prophetically speaking, a time, a prophetic time, is 360 years. So if we, if we multiply 360 times seven times, we get 2,520 years. Now observe very closely and you will see the divine fulfillment of this prophecy. The deportations of the house of Israel began 
in 745 BC, as we found from secular evidence, just quoted. And uh, so if we add 2,520 to 745 BC, we get 1775. But since there is no such thing as a year zero in uh, calendrical history, we have to add one. And of course, from that, we get 1776. And of course, that is the year in which America was founded, not the Jewish state in Israel, which was founded in 1948. And that state was not founded. Now, now, friends, you hear that? It does all, you know, uh, four to the seventh power, multiply by 12, add, add seven, carry five, and divide by how many toes you got, and you come up with 1775. But did you notice? You see how, you see how he and Harold Camping, how they do their math? But did you pick up one thing? Eli James said you have to add one to get 1776. No, you have to add one because there's no zero on the calendar. You have to add one to get to his date. But Harold Camping, he comes up with a number that's too big, so he says, well, you have to subtract one because there's no zero. Now, wait a minute, which is it? Is you add, zero, add one or do you subtract one? Friends, they know so much about the Bible, they know nothing. They know nothing. All right, I thought we had a call there. And I'm just saying, friends, it just shows that they're not right. They're not, they're not honest with the scriptures. They're not honest with the scriptures. Eli said you had to add one, and Harold Camping, Harold Camping said you subtract one. Now, which is it? Which is it? Add one, subtract one. Neither one of them's doctrines add up. See? Neither, neither one of the doctrines add up. And it's all because this is what they're doing. Twisting the Bible. Twisting the Bible. Uh, Peter said, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. One of them adds, one of them takes away, let me, I got to come up with my number. See, I got this number in my head, and I've got to, I've got to make sure that if I, if it just came with this number, boy, wouldn't that be something? Now, do you add or do you take away? Both of them are adding to and taking away from God's word, because you don't get that in the Bible. You don't get either one of their their doctrines from the Bible. Twisting the scriptures, twisting the scriptures. See. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing the nation of Islam does when they're trying to prove that. You know, the black man was here 400 years in slavery. Well, let's go back to 1600 and whatever. They all, they all try to make the, you know, make the math add up. Problem is, friends, you just can't get a man-made doctrine to add up with the Bible. Just does not fit. Just does not fit. Now, friends, if you want, if you want to figure out some numbers, we could do this too. Look at this. Here's, here's what I did this afternoon. Look at what I added up. I took Harold Camp. I took some numbers here. 1942. That's the, that's the date Camping graduated from college, and I added that with 1958, which was the the year he founded the Family Station Incorporated, and I added that to the year that he began op his open forum program. That's 1961. I came up with a with a number of 5,861. Now I subtracted the number of radio stations that he has, and I come up with five five thousand seven hundred twenty-one. And I took the number of books that he has written, that's thirty, and I multiplied it by ten because that's a good biblical number. See that? And here's what I came up with. That's three hundred. So I subtracted five thousand seven hundred twenty-one from three hundred, and I get five thousand four hundred twenty-one. And then I added six because. See, seven is a perfect number. Six is less than perfect number. So I added six, and I came up with 5,427. Now, you know what that means? Look at this. If you look at your number, 5427, it spells out liar. I just did what y'all did. I just took some numbers. Come on, friends. See, are we going to be serious about it? You know, what does the Bible say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what time does that come on Sunday? The, uh, uh, by the the debate. The the, the what that about the KK guy? What yeah. does it come on? Yeah, it comes on at eight thirty. 
Well, we greatly appreciate because people like people like that you need to be exposed what they are. Those are knucklehead idiots trying to send little Christian and need to be exposed what they are. They really want a bunch of liars and quit God's word. So me and my wife will be praying for you because uh, cause I know they'll be trying to be brutal people on that. So where, we'll be praying for you. Where are you calling from? Where are you watching from? Uh, Summerfield. Summerfield. Okay. All right. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, God don't pick out what colors and stuff. He loves all people. But he just gives, looks on the soul, not the color. Exactly right. That's exactly right. So uh, okay, and we'll be praying for you. Are you, you are you watching on antenna? Or are you watching on cable? Watch uh, on forty-seven point one. So you just regular antenna? Yeah, that was like the direct TV boxes. Okay. All right. I'm with you. All right. Well, we appreciate you watching in Summerfield. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for your call. All right, so, but see, friends, you see what we're talking about? Anybody can take numbers. Anybody can twist numbers and make it fit a doctrine. Friends, that's not the way the Bible works. Jesus said, or excuse me, Paul, uh, John said uh, in, in, in Revelation that if you add to or take away from the Word, then there's going to be some serious consequence to this. Let's look at this. Revelation 22 and where am I looking? Verse 12. It's <clears throat> not 12. Uh, uh, 19. If any man shall take a, uh, uh, 18. Revelation 22, 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Friends, we're trying to get you to see that you just cannot get man-made doctrine to add up to this book. And Harold Camping, Eli James, and countless others, they're trying to get you to believe that what they're teaching is a scripture, but it doesn't harmonize with God's word. It just does not add up when it comes to what the Bible teaches. Friends, I hope, you, I hope you'll be watching Sunday night, 830, because we are going to do our very best to show you that a man-made doctrine like uh, race supremacy is so contrary to the Bible, so contrary to the Bible. And we want to help you see that in the Church of Christ, we love everybody, and we're concerned about everybody's souls. Jesus didn't come just to save the white man, like Mr. James is going to say. Jesus came to save the sin, to die for the sins of the world, not just the white man, the sins of the world. Scotty, can we cue up our commercial for our debate? Do we have that queued up? Hello, y'all listening to me in there? Uh, friends, we want you to remind you of the debate. Sunday night, 8.30. We're going to run, we're going to run a commercial. Uh, we're going to go off the air. We're going to run this commercial. And hope you'll be watching. Friends, we're going to, uh, let me get our contact information up one more time. We're just, we've just got just a, uh, about a minute. And I want to remind you of what, uh, where you can uh, reach us, how you can, how you can, uh... sorry about that. I do that every time. All right. Sorry about that. Hate that. All right. Here we go. And uh, I want to remind you where you can meet with us, where you can assemble with us. Sunday nights, Sundays, and Thursday night. Sunday morning is ten, eleven. Thursday, Thursday nights at seven. Same way in Martinsville. Sundays, uh, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, seven o'clock on Wednesdays. In Danville, it is uh, ten, eleven on Sundays and uh, 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. If you'd like to study the Bible with us, we'd be glad to, we're glad to help you. We'd be glad to study with you and sit you anywhere we can. Till next time, friends. Thanks for watching. Always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You'll always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Ladies and gentlemen of this county, the Ku Klux Klan is here to stay. We are here to fight 
for what other people want. 